When it comes about your presence online as a photographer, you have multiple choices, but there is one that stands out from the others, and that is Instagram. And the reason I think Instagram produces such a such an impact it's because this thing that people see in instagram the the idea that if you have an account that it's big enough you can make money with it and in some way this generates a bad trend and but it also in some ways it's, it's a good thing because people are working harder with their photography but i think that with this obsession of creating a big account uh, just with the purpose of money, we tend to do bad things. And this is the reason for which I decided to create this video about five big mistakes that, uh, I don't know if new Instagrammers, but I see on Instagram, five big mistakes that I see on Instagram and tips of, on how to how to avoid them or how to solve these, uh, these small problems. Before we start, quickly on the screen, there's gonna be three names. These are the names from uh, the giveaway that I did on the 20K video. So uh, just post a comment on this video with an email address and I'll contact you and send you the editing courses. Now, let's get back to our video about five mistakes that Instagrammers are doing it. So I think the first mistake that I think is the biggest and the worst thing that you can do is copying silly trends. And by, and by copying silly trends, I mean uh, those photos with the hat and you stand in front of a landscape or copying um, uh, the, the tent you with your feet out or your feet uh, in front of your image or you with the back to the camera or the editing style or the composition or composition plus place plus uh, position. So basically what you're seeing on Instagram is many, 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 many photos copying one idea that came from a bigger Instagrammer. So I think this is, this is a, a very, a very bad thing to do because you, this way you are just a photo in this sea of photos and nobody, when this trend is gonna go away, because every trend comes and goes away, when this trend is gonna go away, your account will look just like something that it's been cool yesterday and now you just need to build a new image, which is not necessarily your image because you just copied the old one. Mistake number two is, I think, using a preset to edit all your photos. Some people say that it's a good thing to make your entire Instagram account look the same. I personally don't think this is a good thing for you as a photographer. Applying the same look on your photos, it's not personally for me a good thing. First, because that look it's gonna be copied it's not gonna be something that will be just yours and secondly my way of seeing photography is to edit with a purpose and that purpose is dictated by my state of mind by the way i feel about that photo so editing in a certain way for example all my photos are shifted to green and blue and are dark and desaturated many some photos work better in this look, for example, moody photos when there is dark clouds and, and there is rain outside, but there are also sunrises and sunsets and those kind of images have to be edited in a different way. So yes, there are big Instagrammers that made it big having the same look, but mm, as a professional photographer, I'm doing photography, landscape photography as a professional before I had an Instagram account, before I had a YouTube channel. I found out that it's better for you to have your own personal style and if you decide to edit a certain photo in a certain way and another photo in a, in a different way then that's just your own way of seeing things and don't get caught up in a single preset that will apply to all your photos. Mistake number three is about not playing by the rules. For example, um, I did this mistake, I, I was uploading for example, panoramas. I really like the 16 by 9 format. I really like to shoot panoramas, but these kind of photos don't work uh, with Instagram. They have this format of 4 by 5. The best way to shoot for Instagram is in portrait mode 4 by 5. It's not always the best thing that you can do, but in order to have a maximum exposure on this social network, I think you should you should just play with the, with their rules and have a different aspect ratio for uh, different websites. But I think for Instagram, this is something that you need to do. I'm still I'm still not doing it all the time. Not all my photos are imported more four by five. It's not. I'm, I'm, that is why because I don't like to play by the rules. I like if I if if a certain place has a composition that is is uh, working better in a landscape format. I'm trying to do it like this. 
but all, even even that I'm trying to uh, leave enough space uh, around that composition to be able to crop it to the 4x5 format at least in the landscape format this is a this is a, a um, something that will not necessarily benefit you as a photographer but will benefit you in the social network because this is their favorite aspect ratio mistake number four is using too many hashtags uh, again this is not something that has to do with your development as a photographer but uh, if you're gonna spam your photos with all sorts of hashtags i i don't see any good coming out of this. Hashtags are absolutely necessary, especially if you are just beginning your account. And my account has, uh, at this point, 4.7K followers, so it's still a really small account comparing to the others. Um, so I'm still using hashtags, but I try to stay as a maximum of 10 hashtags or 12 or something like that. But my hashtags has to be in some way relevant to to the image, to, to, to the feeling of the image. So in, in a way you can use hashtags to describe physically the image and then to describe conceptually the image. So it's the, it's the concept of travel, the concept of being free, the concept of exploring uh, and something like that. Mistake number five is overlooking composition rules. And I see this in so many, so many photos. I mean, they prefer having those big, blurry flowers in, in the foreground as we as landscape photographers try to have a really beautiful and clean photo with a clean foreground and entrance to the image and then to have sharpness from the beginning of the photo to the end of the photo unless the creative process dictates otherwise or uh, the focal length di dictates otherwise but I see so many photos with a wide angle placing their camera right inside the flowers right inside a big blurry element that it's surrounding a really small subject sometimes it works it, it works it works better with portraits uh, but, it, but in in landscape photography the subject should not be uh, should not occupy a really big area of your image the composition should support your subject and because of that i think big blurry elements right in the front of your image will will not will not work and there are all sorts of other mistakes usually people rely only on a certain preset to edit their photos and composition is left basically on the last on the last spot while well, this is this is the 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 core element of building a good photo choosing a good subject in a good light and then building a, a, a geometric composition and a composition made of intensities of light and colors that will support that subject and there are famous places that are photographed in only one way so be aware of that one way and simply avoid it and of course at last there is a bonus mistake it's not all about you being there with the back to your camera i mean it's okay to be it's in your photos uh, to 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 have you as a human presence but not always with the back to the camera standing like this with a hat on your on your uh on your head and some shirt with some squares on it and some suede boots and just try to create a variation. I mean, I, I really don't like to watch like, like you have a figurine with you that you're placing in all your images. So uh, I think you should add a little bit of diversity in your posings if you're into this kind of thing. So here you go. These were, in my opinion, five big mistakes that people do on Instagram and some of them are closely related to your development as a uh, photographer and I think you should avoid them just to be a better photographer but some of them are specifically related to this social network and how the social network works so if you have something more to add because I'm pretty sure you do use the comment section below tell me all about it and maybe you don't agree with the things that I say so just again use the comment section below uh, and uh, until next time keep on photographing it's the only way that you can get better and uh, bye bye